Hello there, Master Hellish here and welcome back to another tutorial episode. Today we'll be talking about maximizing cargo. So that's both passengers and goods and other sorts of cargo. We'll be looking at things like catchment, station ratings and industry production as well as a bonus item in there as well. So first things first, catchment. When you have a station, any station, be it train, bus, airport, or even a dock, you can see that there is an area highlighted around the station. Now I have mentioned this before, but we're gonna just have a look at it in some good detail. So there is a white square, was where the station will be. So if we make an, a four track cyclic station, you can see that there. And then there's a bluish purplish color around that station, which is the catchment area. Now, if you increase the catchment area, around a town that will improve catchment because each individual building in a town has its own stats as to how much it will provide to the station. So if we just turn our orientation across here and put our town across there, you can see that we're going to get the football pitch, we're gonna get uh, what looks like a hotel, a tall building and a load of houses. Whereas if we put it over here, we're just going to get three houses and that will change the amount of possible passengers that will be there. You can turn on and off this coverage highlight area. So there we are, just press the off button and you can see we just get the station. To be honest, I have no idea why you would ever turn this off. So if we put one station down here and one station over here, we can have a look at the statistics by clicking on the station name and if we look at ratings, there's nothing there yet, but as soon as you get a service there, there we go, we've got a couple of trains going now, so we've got some passengers. You can see that the amount of passengers available at each station is very different. This one that had the large catchment area covering a lot of the city has a 78-ish passengers, um, potential passengers a month, while this one that has a couple of buildings down here has a four potential passengers a month. So you need to cover as many buildings as possible with the catchment area for towns. Now this does not work the same for industries. So for example, we have some oil wells over here. If we build a station, and let's make a one track three length station like this. Now if I was to place the train just so that the catchment area, sorry the train station, just so the catchment area only just took one square of the oil wells in its catchment area, that will mean that it supplies oil. And if I do it so that the whole oil field, all the squares of the industry, is, caught, is in the catchment area, it will still supply oil. And it will supply the same amount of oil. Having the station um, and its catchment area closer or further away to an industry will not change the amount that it supplies you. So one thing I didn't know previously is that the catchment area also covers the space between individual stations that are linked together. So if we go find another place, for example, oh, let's have a look. Ah, let's go over here. So we've got this little town and I'm going to put a couple of bus stations in. Let's go with bus. There we go. If I put one bus station over here, you can see that it doesn't um, accept any passengers any mail and it doesn't supply anything because the catchment area doesn't touch the town so we'll put one there now if i put another bus station on the other side of town so it also accepts nothing note none of the catchment area is um, has any buildings in it at all and i connect the two stations together by holding control to do a joint station or a spread station then if we look at the station information, strangely it says it accepts passengers. And that's because even though the two individual parts do not cover the town in between, together they do. So the space between them counts, which is fantastically useful in many situations. Now, speaking of multiple stations, if we have an industry or towns, say for example, this factory with multiple stations at it, so we'll put one over here and one going out over, maybe to a different town over this way, 
then the available resources from that industry or town will be split between the two different stations and the one with the highest rating will get the largest amount of cargo. Now note that only two stations can count up to this. If we have a third station in over here then the industry will only pick the highest two rated stations to distribute its cargo to. And that doesn't matter if it's all the same company or all different companies, it will only pick the highest two. This is one reason why station rating is quite important. So that leads me nicely into station ratings. And to see why station ratings are important, let's do a little experiment. What we have here is a station with outstanding ratings at 92%. What I want to see is whether the station rating dramatically affects the number of passengers. We're on October the 1st, 1968. So what I'm going to do is immediately send both trains back to the depot. So we get an accumulation of passengers at the station from that 92 rating. So let's unpause it. Off they go and we are going to accumulate passengers over the course of a month or so. Okay, so it's now the 1st of December, so we've had two months since we sent our trains away, and we've got 19 passengers waiting at the station. Now our monthly supply is also 19 passengers, that's gone down and we are now at an excellent 76% rating. So it does indicate that the number of passengers you get does depend on that rating. But let's go back a couple of months and try the experiment again slightly differently to confirm that theory. So now we're back to the starting conditions of our experiment. It's the 1st of October and our ratings are outstanding 92%. Now one of the ways that you can make ratings go down is provide a poorer service. But another way is to have a crash and your ratings will drop in that area. So we're going to unpause the game and both the trains are going to go to the depot. And I'm going to tell them to ignore the signals and they should go into each other. There we go. So we've had a crash and you can see our ratings have shot down to 29%. It's an immediate hit. So we will be able to see how much the poor ratings affects the number of passengers that are waiting by the end of November. Okay, so it's once again the 1st of December. We've had two months pass by and this time we only have four passengers waiting at the station. Now our rating's actually gone up a bit to medium because what will happen is the temporary hit that we took from the train crash is wearing off and it's going back up closer to what it used to be. But that still gives us a good idea and we can actually learn two things from this. So if we bring the results from the first test over in a snip that I made and compare it to what we have here we'll be able to see those two things. Firstly the number of passengers in the monthly supply is an indication of the potential passengers. Not how many passengers you will get, it's how many passengers you could get. Because you can see that by the 1st of December, we only have four passengers, whereas previously we had 19. And the other thing is, is that the rating does affect how many passengers you c will get. So, let's summarize that. The monthly supply is how many passengers you could potentially get from that station. Now the number of passengers you actually get is really heavily affected by that local rating. So we've seen now that station ratings are very important. The higher they are, the better, the more cargo, the more people you're going to get. But how do we get a good station rating? Now your station rating, you can see we've got a train going backwards and forwards here, and at this station we have a rating of 69%, very good. But what is that made up of? Well, the first thing it's made up of is a maximum speed of the last vehicle to load. So we've got a vehicle going up and down here, and if we click on it, we can look at its details and see that its maximum speed is 112 kilometers an hour. Now, that will add towards the rating. Now, the better the speed, the higher the rating. Up to a maximum speed, it's 200 and something mile an hour, and then you can't get any better. The faster the train, the more percent it will give you towards your station rating. Up to 17% of that station rating is made out of the speed of that last train that visited. So, keeping your trains and network up to date with fast trains is important for good ratings. Next is the age of the vehicle in years that last visited and to load cargo. Now, if we look at this vehicle here, the age of the vehicle in years is zero. 
Now this gives you a maximum bonus to your station rating of up to 13%. The older the vehicle, the less that's going to give you. So it's important to make sure your vehicles don't get too old. And well, another thing is to get too old, they break down too much. But yes, it's important to make sure they don't get very old, keep the new and fresh, and you will get up to 13% added to your station rating. The next thing, the third thing, is the day since last cargo was picked up. This is a big one. This is the most important. At 51% of your station rating, it is the biggest chunk that makes the biggest difference. And this is the reason why I have long trains, that I have trains stacking up, and I have probably more trains than I really need, because I always want lots and lots of trains at my station loading up. Here you can see we have one train going backwards and forwards. So at this station, we've got a number of days while these five passengers, and seven passengers now, have had to stand around waiting. Now, if a cargo is waiting on the platform for less than seven and a half days, that is the maximum brilliance. In fact, really, ideally, you want to be picking them up straight away so that you don't give the game chance to um, count down those seven and a half days between trains moving in and out. The longer passengers or goods are waiting at a station, the amount of percentage you're going to get at your ratings will drop. So, if you keep picking up goods regularly and don't leave them around for any longer than seven and a half days, you will get up to 51% bonus to your station rating. Okay, nearly there. Number four, the units of cargo waiting at the station. So the number of units at the station affects the station rating. If you've got less than 100 units waiting at the station, now we've got, well, we did have 30 passengers there, but let's say we still have 30 passengers, you will get a bonus to your station rating. So if it's less than 100, you get 16% added to your station rating. Now, the less, the, sorry, the more passengers you have waiting, the less of a bonus you will get. Now, those last four are kind of dependent upon the service you are providing it. The maximum speed of your vehicle, the, the age of your vehicle, the day since the last pickup, and the, um, the amount of cargo waiting at the station. The fifth thing is a bit different. This is building a statue in the town. So, without a statue, the maximum percentage you can get from the other four items is 97%. It's impossible to get 100%. With those percentages that I read out earlier, 17, 13, 51 and 16, 97%. No matter how good a service you provide. You need to put a statue in the, in the town. So, you go to the local authority of the town and drop a statue of the company owner in. This gives you a 10% bonus permanently. If we look at the rating now, it's gone up a little bit. We're 66% now. With this 10% permanent bonus, it is possible to reach 100%. You won't go more than 100%, but it is then possible to reach 100%. So my advice when it comes to station ratings is to put that statue in as soon as you can afford to do so. Make sure you've got regular trains to get your um, cargo picked up. Don't leave it lying around on the station because that 51% is easy to get. So those are what you need to do to get a good station rating. Now, there are a few things that can affect your station rating that aren't those regular things. So advertising town campaigns at the town, at the local authority, they can improve your station rating. Now, if you have a crash with, from a train that uses your station, that will temporarily decrease your station rating. So that advertising campaign I mentioned, that's a temporary um, increase. It will go away afterwards. Um, yep, and a crash will make it down, go down. And also, if you attempt to bribe the local authority and you fail, you will temporarily go down. So there's some temporary changes. So that is station ratings. There's a lot to go through there, but it's a lot of important things to get ratings um, up high. And getting ratings up high means you get more passengers or more goods coming through. And the more goods coming through, the faster you can fill up your trains, make them more efficient, make more money. Very important. Now for a little bonus, um, there is another thing you can do to help with maximising cargo, and that is grow your towns. I've said this on a number of occasions in different videos, in different live streams, in different tutorials. Growing your towns is very important, because if you're working with towns like Pun Town here, you can see that the catchment of this station, if I just put another station over the top temporarily, you'll be able to see the catchment better. It's not all being utilised. 
if this town grows and spreads and encloses and and goes all the way around that station you're filling in more of those squares with houses and towns and bigger office blocks and you can get more and more passages into your station if you want to know about how to grow towns i do have a how-to video on my channel but i also have um, that within my open ttd tutorial specifically episode 21. it tells you all about how to grow towns as well as a few other things about towns as well now the last thing we're going to look at today is industry production now this is more of a bit of information rather than actually demonstrating something so we're just going to have a look at a couple of industries here we go so we've got a number of industries on the screen here. We've got a steel mill. Uh, that one currently um, is um, producing zero tons of steel. Uh, it has a potential to, to uh, produce a certain amount. Um, that iron ore mine, um, because it's a primary industry, has a starting value of 48. Um, the factory, because it's a sec secondary industry, or a tertiary if it's coming via a steel mill, um, has a zero, but that's a potential again. We look at this iron ore mine that's 90 tons so they all have a different amount of production and now for this bit i'm mainly talking about primary industries the more you service a primary industry the more that amount that it will produce will go up now there's some very complex rules in the background about when it will increase how often it will increase whether it will decrease and uh, the percentages it will increase by and all those sorts of things whether it increases or decreases is determined by this percentage transported okay if that percentage transported is above or below certain amounts it will then either increase or decrease or may increase and decrease so if you are using the default economy then if it's a below 60 percent transported it may decrease and if it's above 60 percent transported it may increase and if you're using the smooth economy then it's um, below 60 percent it will decrease above 60 percent it will increase but then also above 80 percent there's a better increase so if you're using the default economy make sure this percent transported is above 60 percent get all your trains and trucks and everything in there and transport as much as you can and get that above 60 percent and if you're using the smooth economy then make sure it's above 80 percent the more it you do that the more that production will increase and get better and better over time and of course the more it produces the more you can shift and the more money you can make now remember the amount of units of cargo that an industry provides to a station is dependent on that station rating so remember the station rating from stuff from previously see how this is all kind of woven together and why I've kind of these items are all in one video it kind of all makes sense make sure you get your catchments there make sure you get the best rating you can then get your industry production up through transporting all of that so there's a lot of different items that I've talked through today and maybe you might need to re-watch little bits of the video again but applying these principles to your game will really maximize the cargo that you can shift and of course maximize the money you can make. So in summary, maximizing cargo. Catchment is very important. You need to make sure you've got as many buildings in a town or city in the catchment area as possible to maximize the amount of people you can get through. This doesn't apply with industries, so if you have half an industry or a whole industry covered by the catchment area, you'll get the same amount of cargo in both situations. If you have more than two stations at an area, the top two with the highest ratings will get all the cargo, with the one with the highest rating getting the most. Stations rating is important because it allows you to get more cargo from an industry or town into your station. The maximum speed of the vehicle increases your station rating. The age of the vehicle will allow you to have a better rating if it's a younger age. The day since your last cargo was picked up will allow you to have a better rating if it's a short amount of days since it was picked up. The units waiting at the station, if it's a small amount, will give you a better rating. And having the statue of the company owner in a town will also give you a 10% extra rating. There are a few things that can adjust your rating temporarily, like advertising campaigns, crashes and failing bribes. 
Remember to grow your town, see tutorial episode 21, and industry production can be increased by making sure that you're transporting as many units as possible from that industry. With the default economy at 60% or more, and with the smooth economy, 60 is good, but 80% is best if you can transport that cargo. So that's all for maximizing cargo. If you've got any thoughts, ideas, or questions, please put them down in the comments section below. I will try and clarify anything you have a question on. And if this video has been helpful, consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more like this or let's plays of this and any of my other series, then consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. I've been Master Hellish. For more about me, go to masterhellish.net and I will see you soon. Take care. Goodbye.